we are Halo Chai, your trusted first line of defense to help stop fraud and on board with confidence. Welcome to our video series, AMLA Compliance 101, where we study Bank Negara Malaysia's Customer Due Diligence Guideline for AMLA Compliance, specifically for DNFBPs, so you don't have to. Today, we will be diving into the topic of Customer Due Diligence CDD for Company Secretaries. But before we proceed, if you don't know yet what customer due diligence is, you may check out our previous videos where we have covered about all the basics of AMLA and customer due diligence. Don't forget to check it out. So now, let's not waste any more time and let's get started. Company secretaries fall under the category of reporting institutions mandated to perform customer due diligence CDD for AMLA compliance and they are required to do customer due diligence when they prepare or carry out the following activities. 1. Act as formation agent of legal entities. 2. Act as or arrange for another person to act as a director or secretary of a company, a partner of a partnership, or a similar position in relation to other legal entities. 3. Provide a registered office, business address or accommodation, correspondence or administrative address for a company, a partnership or any other legal entities or arrangement. 4. Act as or arrange for another person to act as a trustee of an express trust. And 5. Act as or arrange for another person to act as a nominee shareholder for another person. So if you are engaged in any of these five activities, you have to conduct customer due diligence. So now we know what are the activities that requires you to do CDD on your customers. But when it comes to actually performing due diligence, do you even know when do you have to do it? Do you perform due diligence at the beginning of the transaction or at the end of the transaction? So let's find out the answer. For the pre-onboarding of new customers, this is when you have to perform due diligence. But before that, it is essential to bear in mind that this rule is a general guideline and the nature of transactions handled by company secretaries can vary significantly. In this flow, you can see that the pre-onboarding flow begins with initial assessment. And secondly, there's identification and verification. Third is client acceptance and engagement. And fourth is engagement agreement. And CDD needs to be done on step two, which is identification and verification. But why must it be done here? It is because CDD needs to be done before signing of any conclusive agreement between the parties. So be sure to remember that. So CDD isn't only for pre-onboarding of customers. It can also be done post-onboarding, which is on your existing customers. Post-onboarding CDD should be done when you identify any suspicious transaction. In this flow, you can see that after you have identified suspicious transaction on your existing customers, you should perform due diligence. However, if the finding of your due diligence has no match, that means you can just continue with the sales. But if there is a match, you need to identify the risk level in order to decide whether to continue or stop the transaction. And then you have to submit SDR. It is important to be careful and pay attention to signs that something might be wrong when you're working with clients. If you ignore these signs, it could cause serious problems and a lot of stress too. So here are 5 red flags company secretaries should pay attention to when dealing with customers. Red flag number 1, a significant increase in capital for a recently incorporated company or successive contributions over a short period of time to the same company. If a new company suddenly gets a lot of money or keeps getting a bunch of contributions really quickly, it could be a sign of trouble. Red flag number two, family members with no role or involvement in the running of the business are identified as beneficial owners of legal persons. When family members who aren't doing anything in the business are listed as important owners, it might be an attempt to hide who's really in charge. Red flag number three, Client makes frequent payments to foreign professional intermediaries without any logical reasons or without commercial justification. If a client is always sending money to people in other countries without a good reason, it might be a sign of shady business or moving money around for no good reason. Red flag number four, transactions occurring between two or more parties that are connected without an apparent business rationale. 
If there are transactions happening between related parties without a good business explanation, it could mean someone is playing tricks with the company's finances. And lastly, red flag number five, transactions executed from a business account but appears to find personal purchases, including the purchase of assets or recreational activities that are inconsistent with the company's profile. If a company money is being spent on personal things that don't match what the company does, it's like a big sign saying something is not right here. For more list of red flags, you can find them in our ebook. Just go to the description and click the ebook link provided. So that is on red flags. But what do you have to do when you notice a red flag? When you notice a red flag or notice anything suspicious in your transaction, you must submit the Suspicious Transaction Report or SDR for short. So let's talk about it in detail. Reporting institutions must quickly report anything suspicious in a transaction to the Financial Intelligence and Enforcement Department at Bank Negara Malaysia. This is necessary if they suspect something is off or have a good reason to think so regardless of the amount of money involved. According to Bank Negara Malaysia, these are five circumstances when you need to submit Suspicious Transaction Report SDR. 1. Whenever the transaction appears unusual. 2. When it has no clear economic purpose. 3. When the transaction appears illegal. 4. When it involves proceeds from an unlawful activity or instrumentabilities of an offence. Or 5. When it indicates that the customer is involved in money laundering or terrorism financing. In order to submit suspicious transaction report, fill in the SDR form. You can download the SDR form in the description. We have included the link. And once you have filled in the form, you can choose either to mail, fax or email it to these channels. So once again, to get the SDR form, you may download it in the description. Just scroll down and click the SDR form link provided to download it easily. To help you understand even better, we have prepared a simplified flow so you can know exactly what to do in your AMLA compliance journey. So in this flow, you can see that the flow begins with risk check. This means after you have run your risk check, if there is no match found, that is good news. That means it is clean and you can continue your sale. However, when there is a match found, that is when you need to be cautious. There are two different outcomes here if there is a match found. Firstly, if the match found is a financial crime-related result, you may still continue sale but you must submit SDR. However, if the match found falls under MOHA or UNSCR blacklist, you need to stop transaction immediately and submit SDR. That is really simple to understand, right? And by the way, if you found the information we shared in this video useful, you will really enjoy our ebooks. Our ebook offers specific guidance on nearly everything you need to know about customer due diligence, and the best part is you can download it for free. Simply follow the link in the description to instantly download it to your device. So that wraps up our video. Thanks for tuning in to our AMLA Compliance 101 video series. If you found it helpful, give it a like, share it with your colleagues, and don't forget to subscribe. Stay compliant and we'll catch you in the next one.